Okay, so here's my issue with the way that the church is currently building in America. Each house is interested in their own prosperity and their own growth. Building a ministry, building a church is almost like, has almost become like franchising the church and growing a business these days. All right, so the Holy Spirit is saying the buck stops here, literally. Do not proceed. The Holy Spirit is wanting to speak to the church to say, today. Stop building your own platforms and your own houses. All right? Let's take a look at a couple of verses in Haggai. Okay? Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in paneled houses? While well, this house remains a ruin, now understand that the spiritual house of God today is built up of believers, okay? We are all part of a spiritual house. The Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. You've planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, you're not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. All right, so God says, there is not much fruit. Okay, there might be a little bit of fruit. The church has so much greater potential. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin. While each of you is busy with his own house. Okay, so what we have across this nation today is we have men in spiritual leadership and authority who have adopted this belief, and they all have it together because we're all building in the same way. They've adopted this belief that they're going to take God's money and the tithes and offerings of the people and they're going to build their, you know, their building. They're going to build their building and then they're going to take their salary. So they're, they're going to be fed, they're going to be clothed, they're going to have their own shelters and then they're going to turn around and build their own church franchise business to gather the people and the cycle repeats. Okay, that cycle repeats, the, the buildings get bigger, the parking lots get bigger, the congregations get bigger, but there's very little fruit. They don't produce the fruit that God is wanting. They're not utilizing the people in their greatest potential because all we're doing is gathering around a few individuals at the pulpits and building their own house. These men are, are sucking up all these, you know, the resources of the church today. This is, this is where the Holy Spirit wants to issue a word of redirection. Please hear me. No, don't hear me. Please hear the Holy Spirit today. The Lord wants to take his money. He, there's another scripture. I just read it. Bring the tithes and offering into my house so that there will be food. Bring, bring all, all of the tithes and offerings into my house so that there will be food. What does God care for? He cares for the people. He cares for those who are hungry. And if we aren't representing him, then what are we doing? Why does all the church resources across our country have to go into building a structure? Oh, and guess what happened during COVID? Everybody was in lockdown and it took so long for people to return to the buildings. But do you know what God really wanted to do? Do you know what he, people complained, oh, you know, church attendance went way down after COVID and God wants to break his people outside of the four walls and start acting like his sons and daughters in the earth. He wants to 
teach his people how to love. And what love truly looks like, what love does, how love gives and lays down its life for somebody else, not building for self. God can do so much more with his people, with the finances. We can't continue to resort to methods that are methods that aren't after the Lord's heart. Old wine skins that have holes. I just read that. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. The cycles that we adopt as a culture that slowly eat away like a moth eating a old sweater patterns habits, comfortable ruts that aren't leading to much, that aren't bearing much fruit at all. So God is wanting to breathe new life, breathe his spirit into his church in this hour. The hour of the great harvest of souls New methods have to be adopted in order to make this happen. And I'm going to beg to suggest that the methods are all here. The methods have been given. But will we Put aside our own way of thinking, our own methods of building that have an expiry. God is pruning his vine to become more fruitful as branches with little to no fruit are being removed and thrown into the fire. Fruitless activities. I tried to find a congregation in my city that had the Lord's heart in mind. And I went to several one of them bought a building and a piece of land and two of them were working on parking lots one had purchased a piece of land for two hundred thousand dollars cash and they were gonna pave it paint it and then the other one has a parking lot that they're going to repave. And the other one, like I said, um, it was a good deal. They spent $40,000 on a building and a piece of land. Um, the problem that I believe that the Lord has with these methods is if every single church adopts the same thing, we aren't accomplishing the Great Commission. We aren't meeting the needs of the hungry. And I think, you know, what, what could 
that $200,000 of cash do in our city? What could that $40,000 piece of land and old building do in our city? What if the people of God chose to give and care, care for one another and give to the poor and feed the hungry, bring the tithe to God's house, his spiritual house, body of believers, and, and ask the Lord, Who is hungry? Who is in need? In need. Who is in need? Not who is healthy and wealthy. Not who is comfortable in one of the richest nations in the world. So, God has a greater vision for the finances coming into the churches across the country. He has a greater mission for the church than is currently being taught or modeled or encouraged. The great harvest of souls is at hand, and the question is, will you be a part of it? Will I be a part of it? Will we let the Holy Spirit teach us and Christ become the head once again. To seek and to save that which is lost, hurting and dying in our world. And should we start with our own city first? So many questions, but I believe that the Lord has already laid out his instructions in the word, and it's up to us to become obedient followers. So God, I pray that you would speak to um, the people listening today, that your Holy Spirit would stir their hearts and their desires to align with becoming obedient followers of Christ and disciples who desire God above all else to seek and save that which is lost and to take the resources that the church has into their greatest capacity to represent God more fully in the earth today I ask that, Lord, you would, you would make a way, that you would open the way for us to become partners with you in loving the world and in saving those who are lost and who don't know you or who are currently turned off by the rep the representation of God that they're seeing in the earth today. Give us your wisdom and teach us how to love as we follow you like little children holding your hand. In your name I pray.